The uh, architecture of the IBM Sierra system uh, represents a departure from what we've done in the past. Uh, the basic building block of the machine is called a node. And um, the nodes in this case um, consist of two kinds of processors, a, an IBM central processing unit and an NVIDIA accelerator, called a GPGPU for short. Um, since there's two separate processors within a node, people refer to the machine as being heterogeneous. And then these building blocks are connected uh, through a Mellanox network. So that's the basic architecture of the machine. The implications are that we have to rewrite our codes uh, in order to program to these two processors and think that through very carefully. It's a process that takes many years. In fact, before the ink was dry on this contract, we had begun that work. 3D calculations are part of our regular work, but they're very expensive. And we make physics fidelity compromises. The Sierra machine will enable us to ask questions, get answers faster, but also make leaps forward in physics fidelity that we haven't been able to make in the past 10 years. We think there's a lot of potential for how fast our codes can go and to maybe be game changing in the way the end user is going to use our software. The broader implications of this kind of computing technology beyond stockpiled stewardship are that we can create new possibilities for, for really changing impact on society in a number of areas like nuclear nonproliferation, biomedical research, fusion research. Supercomputers allow us to model how the Earth is going to shake in response to an earthquake using the full detailed uh, subsurface geology and we're able to do that in much higher resolution than we've ever been able to do before. So where are we? Well, uh, we're now about four, four and a half years into this. Progress has been, in, in my view, astounding. Speed ups have been, in, for many packages, have been absolutely excellent. We started optimizing our existing code about four years ago, and during that time we've completely refactored our code base and done some research on the new algorithms that were needed for this architecture, and right now we're in the process of actually running problems on the early access machine and uh, tuning the performance of the new code to make it go as fast as possible. We decided to go with the GPU approach because the many core approach, uh, while it was looked easier, uh, really felt like it was kicking the can down the road for some uh, hard choices that we needed to make for advanced architectures and really only for incremental gains. Uh, the GPU path was definitely going to be much harder, but the performance gains that we're seeing really made it worthwhile. What you're seeing is a converging system of two fluids uh, that are uh, have an unstable interface and the, what you're seeing is the mixing of those fluids as the as the system converges. The colors that you're seeing, the red going to the blue, is the concentrations from one fluid to the other. This is exciting because uh, this is a, a code that is used to design and analyze experiments here at the lab and this, is, this simulation is a demonstration that we can scale that code up to the full Sierra using the GPUs. The other reason why this is exciting is that this is providing data set uh, uh, to benchmark the turbulence models that are used in our simulation codes every day. We have started a new code. Uh, it began in 2015, and I think we're doing two things differently this time to, to meet the challenge of Sierra. Uh, the first is algorithms. Our new code is based on compute-intensive algorithms that, that really take advantage of the hardware that Sierra provides. Uh, and the second has to do with infrastructure. We, we specifically developed our new code based on modular infrastructure uh, from the ground up. Now one might ask, why are we moving to a heterogeneous architecture which looks a little more complicated to program to than a homogeneous? And the answer is that was the only way we could see to get the computing power that we need to meet the challenges coming from the program at reasonable cost. Having a machine like Sierra or its unclassified cousin, uh, Lassen, will mean that we can address really complex problems like traumatic brain injury. The TBI problem is really one where we can now sense this very well, but we can't compute fast enough to really use these new sensors as diagnostic tools but with a physician. We need to get the times down, and we've been able to demonstrate just on initial tries, going from many, many hours for calculations to just minutes on these new kinds of machines. Using Sierra's faster runtimes and greater detail and resolution, 
we can run many realizations of earthquakes on a fault segment that can generate a catalog of earthquake motions that could take thousands or tens of thousands of years to happen in nature. In the future, we'll partner with engineers and they'll use our ground motions to uh, try to understand how the Bay Area might respond to a future earthquake or to help design a more resilient infrastructure. In our new partnership with the National Cancer Institute, we're using machines like CRN Lassen to understand the detailed mechanisms of some of the worst cancers. The ability to compute these mechanisms over long time scales is, is allowing us to design new therapeutics that we think will really change this field. At this point in time, we can think about accelerating our computations using machine learning as a tool to do that. Think of it as a potentially a force multiplier. So now we're looking potentially over the next decade at a new way of doing science where uh, we have our integrated design codes. We perhaps think in terms of multi-scale modeling, all of which is supported by machine learning. It's a whole new world. It's an entirely new world. And that's why it is a good reason for young people coming out of college today to think of coming to Lawrence Livermore or to Sandia or to Los Alamos. You can serve your country and you can do great science and not just innovate, you can invent. The whiteboard is blank. It's time for people to put marks on it.